Woohoo! We're now starting the additional higher level part of thermal physics, topic 10, gas laws. Most of the processes that we'll be talking about in this part of thermal physics will involve gases expanding, contracting, etc., etc. And we are sponsored by the color blue. Get ready, my friends. First thing, I want you to state what the, equ what the equation of state is for an ideal gas. Now, that is probably very likely my old friend and your old friend, Pivnert, where you probably know that P is pressure, V is volume. This N, though, might be a little bit new to you. That is the number of moles of gas that you have. And T is temperature. Keep in mind that temperature now has to be in Kelvin. And R is not just for pirates. It's a constant. That is 8.31 units being joules per kelvin per mole. A joule, funny enough, breaks down into a cubic meter times this unit of pressure, which is a pascal. Hopefully you're aware of that. Uh, now, you should know what it says right here, that all the other gas laws, Charles, Boyles, Gay-Lussac, can be derived from this here. As long as you take as a given that the number of moles in your gas, let's say it goes through a compression, is not going to change. If that's the case, you can say that PV over T equals N times R. Just rearrange it. And this is a constant. These two things here. So what you can say in this situation up here, compression of a gas, where you are going to have, let's say, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to a constant. So it's also equal to P2 V2 over T2. But boom, this is your ideal gas law. Uh, or combination gas, or whatever you want to call it. And then let's say that if the temperature remains constant, then that would cancel, and you'd be left with P1V1 equals P2V2. Or let's say the volume was constant. You'd be with pressure over temperature equals pressure over temperature. Or you could do the same thing if pressure was kept constant, and you'd have Charles's law. These here. So there's no huge need to memorize all these other gas laws because they all fall out of the ideal one. So in the 1800s, a bunch of scientists were sitting around practicing their dance moves and they decided, hey, let's take a gas and make it as cold as we can, which in the 1800s maybe wasn't that cold. But they took a gas and they started up here and at constant pressure they kept making it colder and colder and the volume kept getting smaller and smaller. Uh, and got down to about zero degrees, and then maybe they stopped, they got bored, they started trying their dance moves again. But then they said, hey, wait a minute, let's extend this line back to theoretical colder and colder temperatures, even colder than we could ever get. And they said, whoa, there's a temperature back here where the gas would theoretically have no volume, and that happened to be at negative 273 degrees Celsius, or negative 273 Celsius. And that is the extrapolated absolute zero Kelvin. Some other scientists who were also practicing their dance moves said, hey, let's take a gas and put it, get it as cold as possible and measure the pressure at a constant volume. So they ended up extrapolating back from this line and at a constant volume the pressure would drop to a theoretical value of zero also at negative 273 Celsius. And that is how we ended up with absolute zero. Now, this is for an ideal gas. Real gases actually wouldn't behave this way, which we'll see in a minute. Our equations are going to be for ideal gases. But let's say we've got a real gas like nitrogen. Uh, if we then try to get that under increased pressures or really cold temperatures, you might know that air or nitrogen, mainly nitrogen, will go to liquid nitrogen. And so real gases will actually liquefy at high pressures or low temperatures. And this will no longer obey Pivnert. And so they will not obey PV equals NRT at all these temperatures, crazy volumes and pressures, usually low temperatures and high pressures is where things break down. And so for an ideal gas, we do assume that we'll always obey Pivnert, but real gases in real life will not. 
Should the IB ever be foolish enough to present you with a gas lab problem, you should hit it out of the park. Here's some practice to get going. Pause it and see what you can do with this one. Hopefully you are aware that standard temperature is not room temperature. It is instead uh, 0 degrees Celsius, but you can't be in Celsius with this equation. Convert to Kelvin. Standard pressure is 1 atmosphere or 101,000 pascals. You might see it as 101 kilopascals, but you need to keep it in pascals. I rearranged as I did here. Plug in some numbers if you haven't already. Now maybe you do not plug in your units because you're in higher level physics and you don't have time for that. But every now and then you should to make sure you understand why this is happening. You would see that the moles are canceling out, Kelvin cancels out, Pascals cancels out, and you're left with a 0 0.029 cubic meters, which is, I guess, the standard IB unit, but it's kind of an awkward unit because a cubic meter is very big. And you should know that... Oops. Cubic meter equals a thousand liters, so this is going to be 29 liters as your answer. Now here is a problem for suckers. Don't be a sucker. Try and solve this one correctly. A lot of people could miss it. Pause it, see what you can do. Since I'm going from state one of a gas to state two, I can start with the combined gas law here, and it says fixed volume. Now I don't care if it's at 3.8 liters, because I'm going to cancel out that volume and be left with just pressure over temperature with pressure over temperature. A sucker would forget to convert the temperatures and I should know that 23 Celsius is going to turn into 396 Kelvin by adding the 273 and the 100 Celsius is going to be 373 when I add the 273. Now this rearranges to this situation here and I've got 101 kPa's. I can leave it in that in this particular case, because it's not the ideal gas law, uh, and I've got a ratio of 373 over the 296 Kelvin goes away, and I am left with 127 kilopascals. Maybe I'll round that to two sig figs, 130 kPa's. That's it.